So I'm Will. So recently I was asked how long I've known Nate. I hate math. I hate everything about math. So then I start this battle in my head of how do I figure this out. Then I realize I just have to remember how old I am. And that's how long I've known Nate. So 28 years I've known Nate. And uh, it's been a great 28 years, I'll tell you that. So, toast. I really wish I had an actual piece of toast to hand him at this point. <laughs> I got told no. So again, I've known Nate a really long time. I think we met when we were one, and there are pictures of us together in diapers, separate diapers. <laughs> it's safe to say we've always stayed strong friends and have been able to pick up where we left off even after going to different colleges, different careers, and only seeing each other a few times a year, we were able to come back and pick right up. So as children, Nate and I played a complex game of make-believe that we simply called Brothers. This game could take many forms, Cowboys and Indians Brothers, Castle Medieval Brothers, Star Wars Brothers, Dinosaur Brothers, Civil War Brothers, World War Brothers, and so on, wherever our imagination would take us. These adventures could cre frequently span several days, if not weeks, and were authored, acted, and narrated entirely by us. We were also almost always on the same side, but even when we were enemies, it would only last until our first fight or duel, which was often an even match between two mighty warriors. During this, we would both fight admirably and somehow develop an appreciation for each other's skills, and this appreciation, I don't know how, would conquer whatever animosity we had before and we were trying to kill each other. So all of a sudden, we'd be on the same team. We would then embark on epic quests, fight brutal battles, slay dragons, rescue princesses, and so on, always as brothers, who fight for each other and watch each other's backs. As we grew up and matured, these epic adventures changed but never really went away. We would paintball together, play video games together, camp together, backpack together, play soccer together, shoot guns and bows. And, as when we were younger, even when we had disagreements or conflicts, they were quickly resolved and never drove us apart for long. I remember when, about 11 years ago, I met my now wife. I remember telling Nate when Hannah and I got engaged, and I remember asking him to be my best man. I remember how he was genuinely excited for me, but I know Nate, and I know that he wanted that kind of relationship for himself too. But it wasn't God's time for you yet, was it? God had a better plan for you, Nate. Right. And he had Catherine. And I couldn't be happier for both of you. I'm sure you know there's no greater earthly commitment or relationship than this one you have here, that you're starting today. But now, as your brother, I need to give you a warning and I need to give you some advice. There's someone who wants to tear this union apart. He's not happy with what's going on today. Two people who love the Lord have committed to honoring God together in the way that they love each other until parted by death. Satan will try to find ways to break this union, divert your purpose away from honoring God through your selfless love. Sometimes these attempts are obvious and easily recognizable. Other times they are subtle, seemingly harmless, such as telling yourself that your wants, your plans, your needs matter more than theirs. Always be watchful for this and remain selfless in the way you love each other. Catherine, there will be times when Nate is not the perfect husband. Nate, there will be times when Catherine's not the perfect wife. Remember, you are both sinners marrying another sinner, and at times you both will fail. These are the times you can show God's love to each other even more clearly through sacrifice and selfless love. I get a third hand. You have made a commitment that cannot be undone, therefore the only option is forward. Forward through the better, forward through the worse. <clears throat> My father shared a story or an illustration from me, uh, from history, when I was about to be married, and I'll share it with you. When the Spanish conquistador Cortes landed in Southern America with his army, they unloaded their supplies, brought everyone off the ships. Then to the, dis the surprise and dismay of many of them, Cortes ordered the ships to be burned. So with the raging seas at their backs, and no ships, and the vast wilderness before them, the only option was to go forward. Today, you two have burned your ships, and before God and man have eliminated every option besides going forward together. Ahead, there's peril, there's adventure, there's hardship, there's joy. Your mission is to love each other as Christ loves us and gave himself up, up for us, 
and to help each other become more like Christ in this process. This is not the easiest path, but it is a great one, and today you have committed to it. Something truly worthwhile is rarely easy. So Catherine, not to be weird, but I've been praying for you for a really, really long time. I pray for someone who loves the Lord, has dignity and good character, who is beautiful, and who loves my brother dearly. God has answered my prayers, and I couldn't be happier for both of you. So now, let's set that down. A toast to Nate and Catherine and the adventure that they're starting today. I'm Cheyenne. As a friend of Catherine and Nate, it is sweet to see a room full of people who know them and love them and are here to celebrate together. Thank you also to both of their parents for bringing everything together for this day. And thank you, Jean and Steve, for raising one of my best friends. Catherine and I met our first semester at Ball State through crew. Who knew that two awkward people could be such good friends? <laughs> and a friendship that has just gotten sweeter and deeper with each year. Those years have seen summers together, whether in Virginia Beach, Montenegro, or last summer, both preparing to go to Europe with crew. Two years of being roommates, me often making sure she was awake for school or <laughs> work, and her usually being annoyed by that. <laughs> the nights of sitting on our couch dreaming about our future cafe venture, living like an old couple and going through, or instead of going through the drive through at Culver's, we ate our ice cream inside for a change of scenery. <laughs> Deep questions and how to live the abundant life like Jesus talks about were normal day conversations and a lot of laughter and weirdness in between. We would joke that our friendship, along with Mariah, was preparing us for marriage, friends sharpening one another like iron sharpens iron. Catherine, it is a significant thing to have a friend like you. C.S. Lewis says that what draws people to be friends is that they see the same truth, they share it. You have been a friend that speaks truth when I forget it or can't see it. And I know few people who have an eternal perspective like you. And I would hope everyone could have such a friend that fights in faith to live out what God has. You choose risk and you choose love. And it's a joy to me that now you get to live this out with her. And that you'll have ample opportunity to be the terrified driver as she dances to car radio by 21 <laughs> Or more like violently flails. <laughs> She's either all class or all out weird, but I'm sure Nate knows that by now. <laughs> a few years ago, it became our question to ask, what is life? You know, when you see a beautiful landscape, or you're in the midst of a trial, or when the taxi breaks down and you're half laughing, half crying, or when a guy calls and asks to take you to see a play. What is life is not asked in despair but is a strange delight because you know that there's a bigger story going on and by God's grace, you get to be a part of it. You get to experience it and it's monumental, it's simple, it's wild and it's normal. It's life and you're living it. And Catherine, you live it, you embrace it. And it makes my heart full knowing now that you and Nate will be taking on life together and embracing whatever comes. So I was there when these two met a game night as a few friends, and I think she spent the next few months trying to convince herself that she didn't like him. <laughs> How fun to see the friendship or, and their relationship progress and grow, and to be up when she would get back from dates and hear all about it, but only after having to ask a lot of questions. Um, and also have fun to have Nate as a friend and see him as a man of integrity, faith, and generosity who cares well for Catherine. Catherine, you have been part of God's perfect provision for my life and in knowing Jesus better, and now you will always continue to be a part of God's perfect provision for Nate. As his dearest friend and wife, I hope life together continues to be meals made to share around the table with people you invite in, letters written back and forth in your journal, and evenings filled with board games and laughter. And just like game pieces, each has a use and a purpose. But apart from the board or the story they belong to, they do not make much sense. So Nathan and Catherine, I trust without a doubt that as one, you will live with purpose in the story God has. Each move through strategies, risk, setbacks, and wins um, will unfold like a color-filled tapestry of a board to God's glory. It is a great honor and a delight to be part of your lives, to be in the game, and to be part of the story. I love you both and will always celebrate you. To Nathan and Catherine White. Hi everyone, my name is Mariah and I am Catherine's sister-in-law. 
Some of you here may know me as the girl who married her brother, Michael, about nine months ago. But my story and the Holiday family didn't begin there. It all started our freshman year one night after a crew weekly meeting. One of our mutual friends was having people over for a movie night, and I convinced myself to go make some friends. Someone that night had brought a package of Swiss rolls, and somehow, don't even ask, I ended up accidentally sitting on one, and of course, it exploded on me. Anyone who knows me knows that this happens way too often to me. Catherine and I could not stop laughing. Like, I'm talking full-on crying and laughing till our stomachs hurt. This moment was special because it was the first time I had seen Catherine's crazy laugh. And if you know Catherine, you know what I'm talking about. I remember thinking to myself, now this is someone I want to be friends with. Now, fast forward a few years and, and enters Nate. Now, I don't want to brag or anything, but I think I'd like to, I'd like to think I was a vital part of Catherine and Nate meeting. Allow me to explain. One night after another crew weekly meeting, one of our groomsmen, Joe, came up to me and mentioned that he was new to Ball State and wanted to be friends. So our friendship formed, and not too long after, I had the privilege of meeting his roommate, Nate. The three of us had made plans to hang out one night, but little did I know that night would be Michael and I's first date. And there was no way I'd reschedule on this guy. He was way too cute. So, being the good friend that I am, I suggested my new friends hang out with my two closest friends, Catherine and Cheyenne. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. That would be the first time Catherine and Nate met. And after that, as they would say, the rest was history for the both of us. But honestly, though, thinking back to stories like that, I can't help but see God's hand in every small detail of our lives. It has been days filled with endless laughter, crazy late-night conversations, crazy shenanigans, and constant joy by choosing to walk with the Lord day by day. You have been a true role model and sister in Christ. You have pushed me towards living a life full in Christ and not backing down in fear. You show endless love and compassion to those around you. You have the drive and passion of no one I've ever seen, and you choose to be intentional and in pursuit of your loved ones. I can't believe how blessed I have been to be on the receiving end of this friendship, and when I think about that, I think about how even more blessed Nate is. Nate, you are gaining one of the most amazing people in the world today. I hope you know that. And Catherine, you have quite the catch as well. Nate, from the day I met you, I was inspired by your honesty and intentionality. You are incredibly smart, and I'm talking like over your head smart, but just as much humble. You are a loyal friend and always see the best in people. I loved having the privilege of seeing you two through all stages of friendship, dating, engagement, and now marriage. I hope your days are filled with laugh till you cry and your stomach hurts kind of laughs, joy beyond comparison, love for one another that is endless through the good and the bad, and a fire for the Lord that never grows weak. Some words of advice from your newly married friend. Keep God at the center at all times. It really does change everything. Stop to pause every once in a while and look at each other the way you look at each other today. This is your groom. This is your bride. In every situation, remember to put yourself in the other's shoes. You might just learn something new. Never forget that you two are each other's forever best friend and biggest supporter. Find the blessings in everything, even in the day-to-day -day little things. I promise you'll see God at work every day. And lastly, as you would say, Catherine, you've got something good going on here. <laughs> God is at work in your marriage. Nate, welcome to the family, and let's hear it for the newly married Mr. and Mrs. White.